ready be ready start in the light of the contentions put forth by the learned counsel a perusal of the papers would disclose that the petition for dissolution of marriage instituted by the husband was on the allegation that the behavior of the wife was intemperate as she was quarrelsome with neighbors friends and with the visitors it was alleged that she had also gone over to the place of employment of the husband and demeaned him in the presence of the students and other co-workers in respect of the said allegations the trial court having taken note of the evidence tendered through pw1 to pw4 had arrived at the conclusion that the said evidence was insufficient to prove the allegations which were made in the petition a bare perusal of the judgment passed by the trial court would indicate that the evidence available on record has been referred to extensively and a conclusion has been reached the first appellate court has also referred to the said evidence reappreciated the same and has arrived at its conclusion in such circumstances in a proceeding of the present nature where the trial court has referred to the evidence and the first appellate court being the last court for reappreciation of the evidence has undertaken the said exercise and had arrived at a concurrent decision on the matter the position of law is well settled that the neither high court in the limited scope available to it in a second appeal under section 100 of the civil procedure code is entitled to appreciate the evidence nor this court in the instant appeals is required to do so it is in that view we have not once again referred to the evidence which was tendered before the trial court which had accordingly been appreciated by the trial court in such situation the high court had limited scope for interference based on the substantial question of law the substantial questions of law framed by the high court has been extracted and noted in the course of this judgment at the outset the very perusal of the questions framed would disclose that questions raised do not qualify as substantial questions of law when the manner in which the parties had proceeded before the trial court is noticed the questions framed in fact provide scope for reappreciation of the evidence and not as substantial questions of law as noticed in the instant facts the husband filed a petition at the first instance seeking dissolution of marriage in hmop number 65 of 2007 and the same was predicated on the allegation about the wife using filthy language in the presence of the relatives and friends and also using such language in the presence of the students of the husband it is in that light the husband alleged cruelty and sought for dissolution of marriage on the ground it is no doubt true that the said petition which was initially filed was not pressed though the contentions of the parties in that regard is at variance in as much as the husband contends that the petition was not pressed as the wife had assured of appropriate behavior henceforth while the wife contends that the said proceedings had been initiated at the instigation of his parents and had accordingly not been pressed thereafter be that as it may though the subsequent petition was filed by the husband in hmop number 13 of 2010 which was originally numbered in as hmop number 532 of 2007 the same was also filed on the same set of allegations further at that point in time the wife had also filed a petition under section 9 of the hindu marriage act in that background though subsequently in the proceedings before the trial court a reference is made to the criminal proceedings as on the date when the cause of action had arisen for the husband who initiated the proceedings seeking dissolution of the marriage the criminal case filed against him was not the basis whereby a ground was raised of 
causing mental cruelty by filing such criminal complaint in that be the position a situation which was not the basis for initiating the petition for dissolution of marriage and when that was also not an issue before the trial court so as to tender evidence and a decision be taken the high court was not justified in raising the same as a substantial question of law and arriving at its conclusion in that regard a perusal of the judgment of the high court indicates that there is no reference whatsoever with regard to the evidence based on which the dissolution of marriage had been sought which had been declined by the trial court and the first appellate court and whether such consideration had raised any substantial question of law stop